Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. And what a great privilege it is to worship together in St. Louis the Sabbath morning of the 61st General Conference session. Brothers and sisters in Christ as a worldwide family working together in total member involvement. Praise God for the way he has led us during this abbreviated General Conference session, delayed twice because of the miserable COVID-19 pandemic. Glory to our wonderful God that we can say together, yes, Lord, I will go and share the three angels' messages with the world as we anticipate Christ's soon coming. What a privilege it was last night to see total member involvement featured, all of us doing something for Jesus as we look towards Christ's soon return. I want to thank those this morning for some of that beautiful music that has been provided to us, that beautiful anthem that we enjoyed. There is power in the name of the Lord, beautifully arranged by Williams Costa. And after the sermon, you will hear another amazing arrangement this afternoon, and I hope all will be present this afternoon for a very power-packed mission presentation. Please be here. And we plan to end about 6.30 this evening and allow you to close the Sabbath on your own. Be here this afternoon. Powerful messages for mission. That's why we're here. Thank you to that beautiful trio that sang also, How Great Thou Art. And I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that is to be our theme in everything we do. Let's not lift up each other or people. Let's lift up God. How great thou art, lifting up Christ in all of his beauty. I want to thank my very close colleague, Pastor Ayrton Kohler, for his very gracious introduction. He did a lot of research on that. And I told him before we came up, I told, them, I told him, just tell them I'm your brother. Uh, he expanded on that just a little bit more than, than a one-liner. But I want to tell you, Nancy and I are so privileged to be part of your world family. We are the same as you at the foot of the cross, allowing Christ to renew our hearts every day and looking forward to Jesus' soon second coming, where we will say, how great thou art. You know, around this globe, Seventh-day Adventists have that great expectation that Jesus is coming soon. Now, I've shared that phrase in past general conference sessions in different languages. Now, please forgive me if I don't pronounce it correctly, but it is a humble effort to unite our voices in the great theme of Christ's soon coming. So listen carefully. I'll do my best. Jesus viene pronto. Jesus revient bientôt. Jesus brevi voltera. Jesu anakuja upesi. Isus prediot skora. Jesu nimi gold o shimnida. Hai sua seyati serihan. 
Yesu Kwai Laile. Yeshu Yeldi Araha He. Malapit Nang Dumating Si Jesus. Well, I can tell a few people understood what I said. <laughs> Praise God in all kinds of other languages. You see, we share those encouraging words that are full of hope. In fact, our 2022 General Conference session theme is Jesus is coming. Get involved. What a wonderful spirit of spiritual dedication and evangelistic enthusiasm in our worldwide family with with so many countries and cultures in our global church family we praise God that there is one culture of Christ that binds us together and makes us all citizens of heaven as we study the Word of God today I humbly ask for your prayers that the message I share is heard clearly and that only God, His infinite love, His word, His character, His righteousness will be lifted up. With that strong emphasis on the word of God and in the spirit of what I just shared in various languages regarding that marvelous phrase, Jesus is coming soon, let me attempt to share with you another wonderful biblical phrase in those languages and again please forgive my mispronunciation of the phrase and you heard it as Audrey Anderson read it this morning from Revelation 311 hold fast what you have let me repeat that hold fast what you have. By God's grace, I hope you will understand the following in different languages and again forgive me if it doesn't come across correctly. Reten lo cotienes. Retien, retien ce que tu as. Guarda a qui tien. Shiki li sana uli chu nacho. Tavorda dej dish tavo sto jest utibia. Tang shini kashin go sul god gui cha go sib chi yo. Tamasak Vima Ladek Tien Show Nishu O Yung U Yu De Apke Pas Yo Hey Usei Pakad Ker Rek Hawakan mo kung anung meron ka. Well, I probably didn't get an A plus, even a B plus on those, but I want to tell you, I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, hold fast what you have. Let us never give up the pure Bible truth as we see the signs of the second coming increasing around us, we see frequent national, natural disasters, political chaos, compromising through ecumenical activity, increase of spiritualism, instability of world economies, diminishing of biblical and moral values in society and the family, miserable pestilences, and diseases such as the horrible COVID-19, abandonment of God's authoritative 
holy word and his Ten Commandments, increasing crime and violence and wars proliferating in many places. These and other signs point to the end of time and the imperative need to hold fast what we have, never give up the pure Bible truth. Listen to what the Holy Scriptures say, 1 Thessalonians 5.21. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. 2 Thessalonians 2.15. Stand fast and hold the traditions which you are taught. Hebrews 3.14. Hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. Hebrews 4.14. Let us hold fast our confession. Hebrews 10, 23, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. And as our scripture was read today, Revelation 3, 11, behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown. Despite the swirling chaos all around us, we can plant our feet directly and believe completely in the unchanging Holy Word of God, the Scriptures, the Bible. You see, Satan has attacked God's Word down through the ages since his defection from heaven. But God has always protected his Holy Word. And he always will. He asks us to stand up for the truth and hold fast what we believe. Seventh-day Adventists accept the Bible as it reads and as the foundation for all our religious beliefs. From the Holy Word, we understand Seventh-day Adventists to be God's called remnant church with a unique peculiar prophetic identity. It is a unique movement with a unique message on a unique heavenly mission. We are to lift up Christ, His Word, His righteousness, His sanctuary service, His saving power in the great controversy, His three angels' messages, His health message, His last day mission to the world of sharing the good news of salvation, including and I want to emphasize this as we have been praying earnestly for the Holy Spirit here at this 2022 General Conference session and before. We need to pray earnestly for the latter reign of the Holy Spirit and Christ's soon second coming. As God's remnant people identified in Revelation 12:17. Those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ, we have a special message of warning, grace, and hope in Testimonies for the Church, Volume 7, page 138. We read, Seventh-day Adventists have been chosen by God as a peculiar people, separate from the world. He has made them his representatives and has called them to be ambassadors for him in the last work of salvation. My brothers and sisters, hold fast what you have. Regardless of the many obstacles we now face and will face, let us hold fast our belief in God's word and his love for his church. His church will not fail nor fall apart. It will go through to the end under the power of the Holy Spirit. Plead for the latter reign of the Holy Spirit. As we see the world around us disintegrating in these last days of Earth's history and in response to our earnest prayers, God will pour out His Spirit on all who humble themselves and conform their lives to His will as expressed in His Holy Word and His instructions in the spirit of prophecy, thus showing His infinite love 
for the human race. Now, let's review for a brief time the many vital truths from God's Word that He would have us hold fast. Number one, hold fast the biblical truth that the Godhead is constituted by three divine and equal persons who have and will exist from eternity to eternity. Hold fast what you have. Number two, hold fast to simplicity in Christian lifestyle, personal dress, conduct in church life, and everyday activities. Hold fast what you have. Number three, hold fast to biblical truths and their relevancy for today, despite persecution. Avoid issues that are distractions from God's last day, three angels' messages to the world with Christ's righteousness at the core of those three angels' messages. Hold fast to the pure Word of God, not allowing any syncretic, syncretistic or mystic aberrant theological beliefs into the Seventh-day Adventist church. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 1 indicates, but there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies. Hebrews chapter 13 verses 8 and 9, they say, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be carried about with various and strange doctrines, for it is good that the heart be established by grace. Hold fast what you have. Number four, hold fast your careful observance of the seventh day commemorating the seventh day Sabbath commemorating biblical creation accomplished by God recently in six literal days. My brothers and sisters, I earnestly appeal to you in all humility, with all due respect, with all sincerity, do not allow anyone, anywhere, under any circumstances, to negatively influence you to believe anything but Bible truth that tells us that this earth on which we are standing right now was created by God by His Word, and it was done in six literal consecutive days, days just like we experience today, recently. In fact, I will share with you my personal conviction. Some may differ with me. In the spirit of prophecy, which I believe was inspired just as God inspired all prophets, tells us that this earth was created about, and there are different words that are used in different places, about around 6,000 years ago. I want to tell you I believe that statement. By God's grace, I want you By God's grace, I want you to understand why would you be a Seventh-day Adventist 
If in the very fourth commandment God tells us to remember the Sabbath to keep it holy, and in, when, in reality the Lord allows us to work six days and the Bible tells us he took six days to create, capping it off with the blessed, sacred seventh-day Sabbath, why would you keep the seventh-day Sabbath literally if God was telling you a big fable and story and was fooling you? Be a Seventh-day Adventist because you believe God created this earth in six literal consecutive days recently. Hold on to your faith. Hold fast. A simple, healthy lifestyle including a plant-based diet, according to biblical and spirit of prophecy counsel. Hold fast what you have. Number six, hold fast to the unity in the church that God provides to all who focus their lives on Christ and his full biblical truth. Christ himself in Revelation 2, verse 25 says, hold fast what you have till I come. In Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1, page 324, it says, Christ is leading out a people, bringing them into the unity of the faith, that they may be one as he is one with the Father. Differences of opinion may be yielded, that all may come into union with the body, that they may have one mind and one judgment. Let's be unified in Christ. Hold fast what you have. Number seven, hold fast to God's biblical institution of marriage between one man and one woman. God's word confirms biblical marriage, biblical human sexuality, and the biblical family as instituted by God himself at creation. The rampant sexual aberrations in the world are not condoned by the Bible and will not lead to eternal life. Sexual immorality in any form is to be submitted to God's power to change us into His likeness. God's ideal is to be followed, again through His power, to put us in a right relationship with his moral and natural laws. This is not an impossibility, for the Bible clearly indicates in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 to 11, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Now, my brothers and sisters, let me tell you, we need to treat everyone with love, respect, and dignity. But I want to tell you, you draw the line in terms of what is sin and what is not sin by the Word of God. <laughs> Hold fast what you have. Hold fast in humility to spiritual and biblical respect for God's authority, showing respect for God, working in His church through appropriate bodies and careful observance of Bible and spirit of prophecy counsel. Hold fast what you have. Hold fast your great appreciation, use, and promotion of the spirit of prophecy, the writings of Ellen G. White. This 
is a heavenly gift to this church. I, I want to express deep appreciation to this body for what you did on Thursday when you affirmed by an enormous majority the statements affirming the Holy Word of God and the writings of Ellen White. Thank you for what you have done. What a privilege it is for us to listen to the Word of God and to share the Word of God as it reads, not as you may imagine you would like it to read. And for some of you who may in some future meetings, find that some small group may attempt, through manipulation of parliamentary procedure, to somehow put an end to the statements of affirmation for the Word of God and the spirit of prophecy, let me tell you God will always overrule. There is nothing, nothing that can stand in the way of pure truth. Truth will always prevail. Hold fast what you have. Number 10. Hold fast to biblical church growth principles and the heavenly explanations of evangelistic growth as revealed in the spirit of prophecy. Hold fast what you have. Number 11, hold fast your faithfulness to God's unique Advent movement, resisting any compromise with ecumenism and neutralization of the pure word of God. Yes, make friends with people. Explain things to people. Be a good part of the Christian community, but realize we have been called to a unique place in history as the Seventh-day Adventist Church. God intends that His church move forward without compromise on the pathway to eternal, the eternal city led by Jesus Christ Himself. Difficult days lie ahead as God's remnant people will receive everything that the devil can throw at us. In some way, trying to impede the forward advance of God's Advent movement. We know what the Omega, we know that the Omega is coming, I should say, and it will test all church members to rely completely on God to avoid great and overwhelming decep deception and compromise. Do not compromise by entering into ecumenical activities that take away and distract your understanding and belief of the Word of God. Look only to Jesus and His full biblical truth. Hold fast what you have. Hold fast to the core of our salvation and the everlasting gospel. Christ's righteousness, His justifying righteousness by faith, and His sanctifying righteousness by the Holy Spirit working in us. Christ's righteousness is what will save you. Christ and His grace and nothing else. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 through 10 proclaim the New Testament proclamation of what Genesis 3.15 proclaimed in the Old Testament and for all time. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 testifies, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship. Let me repeat that. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. In contrast to self-centered salvation by works, Christ calls us to an understanding that His death on the cross, 
his current intercession for us in the literal most holy place of his literal heavenly sanctuary. And yes, brothers and sisters, I believe there is a literal sanctuary in heaven and the promise of eternal life that is soon second coming. You see, we can only receive this and the many gifts he gives to us through his grace. The promise of Genesis 3.15 is about to be fulfilled when God said, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his, Christ's, heel. What a promise, packed with God's authority, saving power, future destruction of the devil, and the promise of eternal life through the victory of Christ over the devil. Hold fast what you have. Number 13, hold fast to all the wonderful 28 fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, including our understanding of prophecy, culminating with the final announcement of Daniel 814 and the 2300 day year prophecy ending in 1844 with the beginning of the investigative judgment in heaven revealing God's great love for his people as demonstrated in the plan of salvation and sanctuary services this prophecy and God's prophecies are rock solid and true my brothers and sisters don't let anyone attempt to dissuade you from believing that we need to formulate new prophetic understandings since we're in the 21st century. No, brothers and sisters, the pillars of God are sure. His word is rock solid. These wonderful 28 fundamental beliefs are all Christ-centered doctrines of the Bible. Don't let anyone tell you, oh, it's just legalism. Don't look to Jesus only. No, every doctrine we have has Jesus in the center. Hold fast what you have. Number 14, hold fast to your daily leaning on the Lord through personal Bible study and prayer. God's word will sustain you in all that you face. Hold fast what you have. Number 15, hold fast to simple biblical church worship patterned after Revelation chapter 4, giving glory only to God and not to human beings. Hold fast what you have. 16, hold fast to proactive, wide-scale circulation of heaven-inspired spirit of prophecy books. Be a part of the Great Controversy Project 2.0 in 2023 and 2024 and certainly right now if you want to be distributing millions upon millions of the full version of the great controversy my brothers and sisters this precious book is not the Bible we believe in the Bible as our only rule of faith it is the foundation but the spirit of prophecy including uh, the great controversy are messages given to us from God himself through his servant Ellen White. I believe that the spirit of prophecy is one of God's greatest gifts given to the Seventh-day Adventist Church to point us to the Bible, the written word, and to Jesus, the living word. This book, Ellen White herself said, she wished that this book was circulated more than any other book she had written. My dear, my dear friends, don't let any church leader, any conference president, any union president, any division president, or even the general conference president ever tell you not to distribute the great controversy. God wants us to deliver truth to people. And this book has brought thousands, 
hundreds of thousands of people to an understanding of the Christian era from beginning to the future. My dear friends, be a part of the Great Controversy Project 2.0. God will bless you and your local church for it. Hold fast what you have. Hold fast your firm belief as our general conference session theme emphasizes that Jesus is coming soon and that you are to get involved. Share with the world that we can be ready for his coming, that we can hasten his coming and can share this hope of salvation through complete dependence on Christ and his justifying and sanctifying righteousness, allowing the Holy Spirit to speak through you in your personal witness and public evangelism. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 9, pages 116 and 117, indicates the leaders in God's cause as wise generals are to lay plans for advance moves along all the line. In their planning, they are to give special study to the work that can be done by the laity for their friends and neighbors. The work of God in this earth can never be finished until the men and women comprising our church membership rally to the work and unite their efforts with those of ministers and church officers. Total member involvement engages everyone in a year-round program of comprehensive evangelistic witnessing and outreach in all its forms. As we have already mentioned in this general conference session, last November it was a privilege to preach in a number of evangelistic meetings in the Philippines. What a marvelous combination of evangelistic outreach activities planned by the Southern Asia Pacific Division, the North Philippine Union, the Central Philippine Union, the South Philippine Union, and Adventist World Radio in conjunction with Hope Channel. Amazing miracles by the Lord. In spite of the pandemic, about 124,000 people were baptized this last year in the Philippines including more than 1,000 people comprising former rebels and their families. At those evangelistic meetings, Nancy shared health topics and I shared the Bible truths full of hope for the second coming, full of Christ's prophetic power, full of God's authority in history and the future. I want to tell you, every time I preach those sermons, I am reassured, revived, reformed, and humbled in God's written word and the living word, Jesus Christ. I strongly urge you, all of you, if you can, to preach or to be involved with an evangelistic series this year. Pastors, church administrators, teachers, health professionals, church members, old and young, everyone, all going back to your true roots of why we're here, to proclaim the gospel message and hope of Christ's soon return. Nancy and I try to preach an evangelistic series every year, and I urge you to do the same or participate or be involved in personal witnessing. It will revolutionize your life and your personal commitment to this precious truth, reaching many with the Advent message. As our general conference session theme says, Jesus is coming, get involved, hold fast what you have. Hold fast, number 18, to biblical inspiration, rejecting humanism and popular social culture that attempt to destroy God's revelation. Hold fast what you have. Number 19, hold fast to the beauty of the sanctuary and its services, which point to the everlasting gospel, Jesus Christ, the Lamb slain on the cross. We read in last day events, Compilation of Ellen White's writings, page 177, the enemy will bring in false theories, such as the doctrine that there is no sanctuary. This is one of the points on which there will be a departing from the faith. Brothers and sisters, hold fast what you have. Number 20, hold fast to the biblical day, year principle of interpreting biblical prophecy, allowing the Bible itself to interpret itself. The historicist approach shows us 
that history has accurately unfolded according to God's word. Brothers and sisters, hold fast what you have. Number 21, hold fast to the historical biblical or sometimes referred to as historical grammatical approach to interpreting scripture. It is the only hermeneutical approach approved by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Hold fast what you have. Hold fast to the biblical and spirit of prophecy understanding, number 22, that the shaking and sifting of God's church will take place before Christ returns. Last Day Events, page 180, tells us soon God's people will be tested by fiery trials and the great proportion of those who now appear to be genuine and true will prove to be base metal. I want to stop there for a moment. It is only by the grace of Jesus Christ that this beautiful family of representatives from around the world will not be included in that prediction that we will only be base metal, meaning of no value. By God's grace, I hope every single one of you will be so faithful to God's word. We will all be present and waiting for Jesus to come. The church may appear as about to fall, but it does not fall. It remains while the sinners in Zion will be sifted out, the chaff separated from the precious wheat. This is a terrible ordeal. I've been quoting now, but nevertheless, it must take place. Hold fast what you have. Number 23, hold fast to the precious understanding that we are God's worldwide remnant Seventh-day Adventist church in over 200 countries who support each other, avoiding the mission-destroying concept of congregationalism. Testimonies, Volume 6, page 27, states the whole missionary work will be farther advanced in every way when a more liberal, self-denying, self-sacrificing spirit is manifested for the prosperity of foreign missions. For the prosperity, this is the principle, folks. Put it in your mind. Those of you who are tempted to keep what you have, listen to this. The prosperity of the home work, the work where you are, depends largely under God upon the reflex influence of the evangelical work done in countries afar off. Let's be a world church that shares with each other. Hold fast what you have. Number 24, hold fast to the wonderful foundation of God's government based on love his eternal law, including his Ten Commandments. We do not keep God's law through our own power, but only as we lean on Christ and his righteousness can we be secure. Let's see what Last Day Events, page 180, says. When the religion of Christ is held in contempt, when his law is most despised, then should our zeal be the warmest and our courage and firmness the most unflinching to stand in defense of truth and righteousness when the majority forsake us to fight the battles of the Lord when champions are few. This will be our test. At this time, still quoting, we must gather warmth from the coldness of others courage from their cowardice, and loyalty from their treason. Brothers and sisters, hold fast what you have. And the final point here, although we're not done, number 25, hold fast to God's special plan of health reform and comprehensive health ministry as you advocate a healthy lifestyle of God's eight natural remedies, good nutrition, regular exercise, ample use of water, temperance in all things, pure air, adequate sleep and rest. And you'll get some after GC session. That's good. Trust in divine power. God's health plan rejects alcohol, tobacco, 
illicit drugs and improper lifestyles incompatible with biblical and spirit of prophecy principles. Health reform is God's plan for the most abundant life possible on this earth, preparing us for Jesus' soon return. Read and follow God's counsel for health as part of the third angel's message, staying away from anything that will defile you, all through the power of the Holy Spirit. Hold fast what you have. My brothers and sisters, as we've reviewed these 25 points, and others could be added, stand firm for God's amazing biblical truth for this time. Do not be distracted, but rather focus fully on God's word and spirit of prophecy counsel, giving us connection to God, hope for the future, and a reason for being Seventh-day Adventists. In summation, let's focus on our specific calling by God as, last, as a last-day remnant church for these last days of Earth's history to proclaim worldwide the three angels' messages of Revelation 14 and the corresponding fourth angel of Revelation 18. The Lord calls us to be part of his last day movement and mission. That's who Seventh-day Adventists are. God's remnant church called to present completely God's precious truths to everyone who will listen with an open heart. Allow the Holy Spirit to spiritually revitalize your life, your family, your activities, your work for the Lord, and your local church. Let's earnestly pray for the falling of the latter reign of the Holy Spirit to accomplish this work in our lives. We need revival, reformation, repentance, and humility, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us. For the past months, we've been asking church members all over this globe to pray earnestly that the, the Holy Spirit would take control of this 2022 General Conference session. And we praise God for doing so. Our hearts are refreshed and inspired to accomplish what God has in store for us in these last days of Earth's history. Since God formed the Seventh-day Adventist Church, His remnant church, to proclaim his three angels' messages of Revelation 14. Testimonies, volume 9, page 19, indicates, in a special sense, Seventh-day Adventists have been set in the world as watchmen and light bearers. To them has been entrusted the last warning for a perishing world. On them is shining wonderful light from the Word of God. They have been given a work of the most solemn import, the proclamation, this is it, of the first, the second, and the third angel's messages. There is no other work of so great importance. They are to allow nothing else to absorb their attention. Since these messages are so central to our mission as Seventh-day Adventists, I would like to take the next few minutes, and I know we're running just a few moments late. I ask your indulgence as we finish with these important points, some vitally important points about these messages, reminding ourselves as to what God-given mission is all about. We read in Revelation 14, verse 6, Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. The core of the three angels' messages is the righteousness of Jesus Christ, his justifying and sanctifying righteousness. The foundation of the everlasting gospel is based upon Jesus Christ, his righteousness, and his great sacrifice for us. As Christ's followers, we proclaim him because we're connected to him and his righteousness. In verse 7, it proclaims, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come, and worship Him who made heaven and earth, the sea and springs of water. Now the first angel's voice is loud, so everyone will hear and give glory and praise to God. The text indicates, for the hour of His judgment has come. 
Yes, we are being judged. In 1844, the investigative judgment began in the most holy place in heaven as the Lord began reviewing the lives of people down through history. One day, soon, probation will close, which is why it is vital for us to always lean on Jesus and His righteousness. This judgment is also before the entire universe, telling everyone that God's wonderful character of love is just, pure, perfect, and true. We are to worship Him who made heaven and earth and the sea which ties into the third angel's message, signifying that God is the all-powerful creator. We are to worship him on the seventh day Sabbath, which is a distinct sign or seal of his authority. It will be one of the great controversial topics of the last days, since the seal of God is the keeping of the seventh day Sabbath, whereas the mark of the beast will be the keeping of Sunday. The time will come to make the ultimate decision of who to worship by indicating where our loyalties lie, with God by worshiping on his holy seventh-day Sabbath regardless of the consequences or by following the beast who has set up his false day of worship on Sunday. It is at that time that those who choose to keep Sunday will receive the mark of the beast at that time, not before. The great controversy plainly states on pages 604 and 605, with the issue thus clearly brought before him, whoever shall trample on God's law to obey a human enactment receives the mark of the beast. The Sabbath will be the great test of loyalty, for it is the point of truth especially controverted. When the final test shall be brought to bear upon men, then the line of distinction will be drawn between those who serve God and those who serve Him not, while the observance of the false Sabbath in compliance with the law of the state, contrary to the fourth commandment, will be an avowal of allegiance to a power that is in opposition to God. The keeping of the true Sabbath in obedience to God's law is an evidence of loyalty to the Creator, while one class, by accepting the sign of submission to earthly powers, receive the mark of the beast, the other, choosing the token of allegiance to divine authority, receive the seal of God. Revelation 14, 8 states, and another angel followed, saying, Babylon has fallen, has fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. This is the church down through the Middle Ages that continues today led by the papacy. It will, according to Bible prophecy, unite with apostate Protestantism and spiritualism to form the triumvirate powers attempting to force submission from all who faithfully follow the Word of God. I want to tell you we love everyone. We, re we show respect to all religions. But there is only one true God and one truth from His throne room in heaven. Babylon is a symbol of complete confusion, chaos, and the mixing of truth and error, and is fallen because it represents the devil and satanic influences confusing people. Again, from the Great Controversy 588, through the two great errors, the immortality of the soul, that's the false lie uh, of the devil, that something lives beyond death, which is wrong, it's not biblical, and, and I'm quoting, and Sunday sacredness, Satan will bring the people under his deceptions. We do not believe in the immortality of the soul, but the devil tries to bring in that deception to cause confusion and open the door to spiritualism, which will combine with the Roman power and apostate Protestantism, forming this union to confuse people. It is Babylon. Continuing in the great controversy, 
Through the two great errors, the immortality of the soul and Sunday sacredness, Satan will bring the people under his deceptions. While the former lays the foundation of spiritualism, the latter creates a bond of sympathy with Rome. The Protestants of the United States will be foremost in stretching their hands across the gulf to grasp the hand of spiritualism. They will reach over the abyss to clasp hands with the Roman power. And under the influence of this threefold union, this country, now that's referring to the United States where we are right now, and I tell you, I am a citizen of this country and I thank God for this country, but I want to tell you, this is what the future holds. This country will follow in the step of Rome in trampling on the rights of conscience. This is not a conditional prophecy. It confirms Revelation 13 and 14. The United States, represented by the two-horned beast of Revelation 13, 11, will repudiate the very foundations upon which it was founded. Its two horns, representing republicanism, that's not the party, that's the form of government, and the other representing Protestantism, this two-horned beast will create an image to the beast through a national Sunday law. You can count on it. It's coming. Revelation 13, 12 states, and he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes in the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. This clearly shows that the image to the beast, the United States, combined with apostate Protestantism, will initiate activities to support the beast and a Sunday law and will make the whole earth worship the beast whose deadly wound is healed. There will be national and international Sunday laws that will deprive all Bible-believing Christians worldwide of their religious liberty and freedom of conscience. The devil, his supporters, and his false day of worship will appear to have triumphed, but it will not last long. God's great sign of his authority as creator, the seventh-day Sabbath, will be the seal of his people and will triumph forever when Christ returns to take his people home to heaven. Revelation 14, 9 and 10 say, Then the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or in his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. So receiving his mark in the forehead represents a conscious acceptance and belief of the beast's instructions. Receiving the mark in the hand represents that even if you may not believe the instructions, you will sacrifice your eternal life simply to temporarily save your current physical life. Last day events, 224, the mark of the beast is the papal sabbath when the test comes it will be clearly shown what the mark of the beast is it is the keeping of sunday the sign or seal of god is revealed in the observance of the seventh day sabbath the lord's memorial of creation the mark of the beast is the opposite of this the observance of the first day of the week brothers and sisters lean on christ his holy word, and his spirit of prophecy as we prepare for what is soon to come. Ponder this from last day events, pages 136 and 137. The whole world is to be stirred with enmity against Seventh-day Adventists because they will not yield homage to the papacy by honoring Sunday, the institution of this anti-Christian power. All Christendom will be divided into two great classes. Now I'm telling you in my words, only two, not three or four, only two. Those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus and those who worship the beast and his image and receive his mark. The three angels' messages end with marvelous verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. 
by God's grace and power. Let's keep all the commandments of God and have complete faith in Jesus. As the three angels' messages are proclaimed, the Holy Spirit will guide us to be unified. In Principles for Christian Leaders, page 306, we read, His transforming grace upon human hearts will lead to unity that has not yet been realized. For all who are assimilated to Christ will be in harmony with one another. The Holy Spirit will create unity. I am instructed to say to Seventh-day Adventists the world over. Now, when you read a phrase like that, listen well. God has called us as a people to be a peculiar treasure unto himself. He has appointed that his church on earth shall stand perfectly united in the spirit and counsel of the Lord of hosts to the end of time. When the powerful injunctions of the third angel are proclaimed, there will be unusual responses. In Principles for Christian Leaders, page 307, we read, Heretofore, those who presented the truths of the third angel's message have often been regarded as mere alarmists. Their predictions that religious intolerance would gain control in the United States, that church and state would unite to persecute those who keep the commandments of God have been pronounced groundless and absurd. It has been confidently declared that this land, talking about this country, could never become other than what it has been, the defender of religious freedom. And thank God today for the religious liberty allowed to us by this government in this country to meet in this arena today. Praise God for that. But going on in reading, but as the question of enforcing Sunday observance is widely agitated, the event so long doubted and disbelieved is seen to be approaching. And the third message will produce an effect which it could not have had before. So my dear brothers and sisters, as you can tell, this is a serious message. And I thank you for your patience. I labored on this message. I want you to share these precious three angels' messages with heavenly kindness and Christian love. Don't beat people over the head with it. Share it with a smile. These messages not only have a strong warning, but they have great hope through the righteousness of Christ as revealed in the everlasting gospel. So don't get weary or discouraged. Don't give way to complaining and skepticism. Do not turn away from the Lord and the task he has entrusted to us. Look to Jesus Christ and live as you respond to God's instructions for his last day people. We are on the edge of the promised land as we view the approach of Christ's soon second coming. But the devil wishes to discourage us, just as he did with the Israelites before their entrance into the Promised Land. They'd been wandering in the desert. You know the story. They became weary and tired. They bitterly complained against God. They lost their focus on what God had in store for them as his people of promise. Numbers 21, verses 4 through 9 say, then they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, and the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way, and the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food, no water, and our soul loathes this worthless bread. Talking about manna. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and many of the people of Israel died. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord, and against you pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Thank God for praying people. My friend Pat Langley, you are a prayer warrior. You're seated down here in the third row. May God bless you and so many others who are prayer warriors for God. Moses prayed. And then the Lord said to Moses, 
make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent, and he put it on a pole, and so it was, if a serpent had bitten anyone, that he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. Our only salvation at this time of skepticism, doubt, cynicism, resentment against God is to look to Christ and live. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 430. The lifting up of the brazen serpent was to teach Israel an important lesson. They could not save themselves from the fatal effects of the poison in their wounds. God alone was able to heal them, yet they were required to show their faith in the provision which he had made. They must look in order to live. It was their faith that was acceptable to God, and by looking upon the serpent, their faith was shown. <clears throat> they knew that there was no virtue in the serpent itself, but it was a symbol of Christ and the, necess the necessity of faith in his merits was thus presented to their minds. My dear brothers and sisters, don't lose your faith in Jesus Christ and his promises for his last day remnant people, the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Look up to Christ, his merits, his righteousness, his everlasting biblical truth, and we will live. In the LNG White Estate offices at the General Conference headquarters, a large painting called Christ of the Narrow Way portrays God's people moving along a treacherous pathway. Many of you may have seen it and been impressed by how veteran Seventh-day Adventist artist Alfred Lee depicts Ellen White's vision showing the tribulations and the triumphs of God's last day remnant church as it moves along the ever narrowing pathway. As long as God's people, both individually and as a united body, keep their eyes fixed upon Christ at the front of the pathway and do not compromise their faith, they are safe. Let's stop looking to each other. Stop looking to so-called experts. Stop looking to worldly influences. Stop compromising. Stop looking to errant theological thinking. Stop looking to humanly devised church growth methods and turn our eyes upon Jesus and his heavenly instructions. Jesus Christ is the true leader of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I am not. I'm just a humble servant along with you. Jesus is the only one who can guide us safely to our heavenly home as we look to him alone each and every day. And one day, very soon, we will look up in the eastern sky and see a small cloud approaching, about half the size of a man's hand. We will realize it is the second coming of Christ, and that cloud will get brighter and brighter and larger and larger. All of heaven poured out for this climactic event, and in the middle of that cloud, we will see Jesus. We will say, this is the God that we have waited for, and he will save us. Jesus will look down and say, well done, good and faithful servants. Enter into the joy of your Lord, and we will ascend to heaven together. I long for that day. You'll see your loved ones who have died in the Lord but the most important thing, we will see Jesus. You'll look around and you'll see those whom you've invited because you said, yes, Lord, I've held fast the truth you gave us. I engaged in total member involvement. And I said, yes, I will go and be part of sharing God's last day message to this world. You see, friends, Jesus said in that heavenly council of peace with the Father, I will go to earth.
and give my life. He said to his disciples, go into all the world. And he says to us, go. For as we prepare for Christ's soon return and the Lord to see our precious Savior appearing, we will be sent by him. What a privilege to follow Jesus' example in going. What a day that will be when Jesus will come and we shall behold him. Charles Huggabrooks has been leading us in music. What a privilege to work with Charles. Pastor Mark Finley and I have been working with Charles in evangelistic meetings just recently in Indianapolis. What an amazing opportunity to see God at work in the hearts of people and the messages that God sings through Charles. And he's joined today by Anika Anderson. What a privilege it is to have the two of them sing together. We shall behold him. The sky shall on. Preparing his entrance, the stars shall applaud with thunder a prayer. in his eyes shall shall enhance those of waiting and we shall be whole him then face to face we shall be hold we shall be hold
they shall be changed in a moment, one moment. just one moment, and we Thank, thank you so much, Charles and Anika. My brothers and sisters around the world, those of you viewing and live streaming, those of you here in the auditorium, if you want to behold the coming King and commit yourself to Christ and His precious, precious final Advent movement, and you wish to say, yes, Lord, I will get involved and through the power of the Holy Spirit proclaim your infinite love and share your last day three angels' messages with a world in need of the good news of the everlasting gospel. As we approach Christ's soon coming, would you join me in standing in commitment to this call right now? Amen. Our gracious Father in heaven, you see your people standing before you. After this majestic anthem which has pointed us to Jesus soon coming when we shall behold Jesus, now, Lord, send your people on their way. Give them Holy Spirit power to not only proclaim but to live the precious word of God. Lord, we entrust ourselves into your hands. Use us as we say, yes, Lord, I will go. Lord, use us to share with others the precious love of God, his character, and his soon second coming. Thank you for hearing us in this prayer. In Jesus' name we ask it, amen. Please remain standing for our last anthem, and then we will have the benediction. God bless every one of you.
Let's pray. Lord, there's nothing we long more for than to see your face, than to see you coming in the clouds of glory and to rejoice because you have called us by your name. As we have heard your word today, we commit ourselves to stand in your grace, hope, and truth. We ask that you will give us the strength to hold fast until you come. And Lord, until that day, we long to do your work as your servants to spread the message to every kindred, tongue, tribe, and people across this planet. We commit ourselves to go because you have asked us to take your blessings to the world. We do this in the name of Jesus because he has commanded us to take his message to every person in this planet. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings of today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Welcome, friend, to 2CBN Television Network. Here, we want to preach the uplifted Savior. We want to have quality Bible seminars to help you dig deeper. We want to have interviews with shakers and movers. We want to have family, life, marriage, and youth programs. 